next step is in your abdomen. The next step is in your abdomen. It what moves you, okay? Usually you wait for nature to move you, to affect you by affection, to be affected, and to pay you attention and to have this, this effect of nature on you, okay? Now you're going to declare that your soul is what stirs you and moves you. Om Namah, okay? Param is the highest. Atma is a self. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. Okay? Paramatma is the word that we use then when we do not know our soul name. <coughs> when you know your soul name, you use your soul name. Okay? So I would say, Om Namah Mahavajra Gam. You would say, Om Namah Vishwajaya Gam. Okay? Om Namah Samanta Dharmana. The goal is to declare I acknowledge that what I am as a soul moves me, stirs me. Okay? This is what brings the movement in you. Alright? So this is why instead of waiting for nature to move you and nature, we also speak of emotional nature and mental nature of others. Okay. Instead of waiting for others or events or stuff, things, ideas, <coughs> beliefs to affect you, your soul is what motivates you, your soul is what stirs you, moves you, affects you. This is gum. Gam has no dictionary meaning. It's the gam. It produces an expansion, a movement, an energy force. Okay. So those who don't know their soul name, Om Namah Paramatma Gam. Those who know their soul name, Om Namah My Soul Name Gam. Okay. And as you meditate on your soul name, you understand what is this soul that I am. Okay. Because I explain, Vishwa <coughs> is universal. Jai is victory. Okay, it's Jaya or Jai. And Ajai means not victorious. Do you know why? It does not mean failure. It is the absence of conflict. Okay? <laughs> Just so you don't think, oh no, Ajai is. That's your human name. What's your soul name? Viterbo. Okay. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Okay, so you get this, but Red Heron does not understand Vishwa. He has an intellectual understanding. He saw photos on the website of the NASA. But what is, how do I experience universe? He's got an idea of what is expanded consciousness. But there's always something more of a more refined nature of what is the universe. I meditate sometimes, Maha Vajra. And some people say, what, you meditate? So you don't know what Mahavajra means? Well, intellectually, yes. But what else, what did I not yet incarnate of myself? What is not the experience of immensity, Maha? When I walk, when I do human things, am I still in the mindfulness of immensity of what I am? And Vajra, the stillness of mind, the impermanence of all things, Whatever Vajra means, which is not dictionarily explainable, okay? So what did I not yet incarnate? So you don't meditate your soul name or use it in a mantra because you understand it, but because you want more, okay? Sometimes you understand Anima, but you'll do it again because you still want the experience. <laughs> has nothing to do with, if you get it, oh, I understand, I did it, I'm, I'm, I'm at the 11th city now. Okay, but from 1 to 10, did you, I mean, are you God? <laughs> you might want to do it, do it again. <laughs> with the wisdom of what it is. So, take a moment, please, to think what affects you. What affects me inside? 
Am I allowing my family to affect me to the point that I'm limited? Am I allowing the opinion of my father to count? I'm not telling you to reject your father's opinion. I'm telling you your father is not your father. You are not born of flesh but of soul. If you really consider the opinion of your father, you'll be in prayer in front of my father, which are in heaven. Holy be thy name. You'll be asking, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara. You'll be praying. If you really want the opinion of your real father. Okay? So, if you consider the opinion of another human being, which has the right to exist, which limited experience of life, such as your limited experience of life or mine, what touches you? What moves you? Do you allow your job to affect you? You have no choice. Okay, we're, we're, we have to play the game. You have to stop wanting to be freed from the effects of your job and accept to flow in and adapt. You have to accept that it will work on you. Okay? It's okay. So you need to do observation. Now, we will not do integration. Integration is intensive prospection of digging up the stuff. Now we will do observation. We will observe, pick something that affects you to the point that you allow it to trouble you because they have opinion, because you went to the restaurant and argued with a friend who had a different view, because he was so enlightened and you were not. Okay? What affected you? What moves you? Did you make decisions according to someone else's opinion because you could not make your own mind? It means that you gave them your power. Asking for consultation and opinion is good. Doing what they want because you don't know, that's not powerful, that's not responsible. You need counseling, go get it. It's okay. Come back to the state of what you are. So, did you leave the guy or the woman because they said it was preferable for you? Did you buy this trust or that investment because of good sales pitch? You need to, to look inside what you allow to affect you. And of course everything will affect you. Are you enslaved to that process? Are you troubled? Instead of digging up intensely, you will observe. Simply observe the fact that you are affected and troubled by the noise of the city, by the opinions. Okay, it's a general experience. And you breathe and you observe, and you just do that. Sink in it. To do the third step of this technique, you need to become aware that you are at some point affected by something else than the self. And accept it and observe it peacefully. What will happen is that as you peacefully and softly observe the feeling of being affected by not self, by everything else, by nature, by people, by opinion, by traffic, by the paycheck, by observing that, its power over you will slowly diminish. So you have to do that now. As I speak, it's okay. If an emotion arises, take a deep breath and let it go. If you're pushing the emotion away, you're in denial. Breathe as it naturally goes. It doesn't really flee. It dissolves. It puffs in smoke. And boom, no more. You can play the game of the physical, vital, emotional, and mental. What affects my physical body? What affects my energy? 
what affects my emotional state, what affects my mind, my confusion or my clarity. You can play the game all at once or separately. Observe. And you will do this often. the need to control will show up. Do you need to control? You are affected or you are afraid of that. You are stirred and moved by thoughts and emotion and nature. Are you afraid of that? Are you trying to control it to prevent it? Ah! So maybe the goal is not to stop being affected, but stop reacting to the fact that you are affected. The less you react, the less you'll be affected anyway. It's, it's an ongoing process. It moves. Okay? So you integrate. It's not under integration, but it's, it's, we'll call it that. Okay? But it's very peaceful and relaxed. It's contemplation of a experience of nature. Okay? Exhaustive observation is not integration. Exhaustive observation is to watch long time and the nature of something will evolve and dissolve. It's a more relaxed way. To extend your lifespan, you can't stress yourself as much as when you do integration. <coughs> integration is something you do sporadically, then you really need to relax. At other times, you just want to watch. And you see, it just rises. Yes? Good. And then your reaction to control? You look at it, so control will go away. Peaceful, yes? What did you call it? Exhaustive what? Observation. Observe. Like with the eyes, but not with the eyes. With attention. But while you're doing this, you are moving your pool of consciousness because you're conscious at the emotional, mental, vital plane, maybe physical, but you're conscious of what you are and conscious of events happening in what you are, so it moves. Okay? Peacefully observing, allowing it the time it takes. So now we are in seminar. We want to cover a whole lot of stuff of wisdom. So we can't spend an hour, but I will ask you, do exhaustive observation when you are ready one hour per day for a few days and then relax like when you're doing the integration of the masks that's exhaustive observation you sit in one of the 20 masks of the ego the first day you sit in fear for one hour relaxing in it allowing just to go up second day you're in shame Second, third day you're in pride, and then in abandonment, rejection and guilt, and then you're in power, control, manipulation, savior, victim, and the persecutor. You'll do the 21 masks of the, of the ego in the order you want, but following the tree is good. Okay? So, those who know the 21 masks of the ego, you might want to do a 21 day process of exhaustive observation of the ego. And you will think that you are done with shame. You will sit, what is shame? The experience of shame. You'll, you'll reenact it by theater. You'll just sit there. And you'll remember when you were two years old and some little trinket happened, but you were ashamed, like a two-year-old can be sometimes. That was completely absent of your memory. Well, the stuff will come up, you know? And you'll just observe it. You'll not do intensive integration. You can if you want, but that's not the goal of this approach. Just observe parts of you that affect you until it stops. Okay? Do you feel the energy start to want you to transcend? It means that you're done with this explanation. So we'll do with the other aspect. Declare that you are moved by self. Om Namah Paramatma Gam Om Namah Mahvadra Gam Om Namah Amanyana Gam Om Namah just use your soul name if you know it. 
or else you do paramatma. Om namah diti ma gam. Okay, you just use it and feel inside that there will be stirring, maybe turmoil, maybe movement, but finally, not from nature, not from opinion, not from persecution, not because of responsibilities, because simply because of contemplation that you are moved, stirred, motivated, affected by soul. Om Namah Paramatma Ga. Okay. Om Namah Paramatma. And you feel it inside, mostly the abdomen. And doing this, you are declaring that it is your soul that gains power over you. That it is your soul that provokes the events. And the more you go, the more the lessons in life you'll have are those who were really planned by life instead of just the force of nature screwing up. Okay? To the point where if something could screw up because of random possibilities of nature, it will not if your soul wants it not to happen. If your soul said, no, I don't need this experience, it will prevent nature from acting its in, in its own way. It's as powerful as that. And you see that the forces of nature, such as aging, will stop to lose power over you like any other force of nature. Okay, one more step. I like to take my little 21B bracelet. It's not because I'm addicted to it and I love it. Okay? Because it's useful in a car instead of having the long thing. So I do one little bracelet, Om Namah Sukhyananda and then one little bracelet, Om Namah Prema Fostiaha, Om Namah Mahavarana, Om Namah Sidyarogana, Om Namah Sachidananda. Yeah, I just go on. And I do them. And if you transcend, you stop. <laughs> okay? Because this is what you have to do incarnate. So up the four the first four mantras you can do incarnate. When you get to the fifth one, forget it, you just go. Okay? This is not the incarnate thing. It's not something you, you have easy access to incarnate. You, you might actually transcend. Don't do this while driving if you're not accomplished in this work. Okay. In my three days of driving while I was coming here, in the third day, I did not transcend while I was doing the city meditation okay, for 11 hours. No, I didn't transcend. I was just cold, conscious and focused. <clears throat> just for precision, I did not do it 11 hours, just a bit less, okay? For those who would argue, as long as it was more than one. No, okay. So I, I do spend periods of three, four, five, six hours in a car driving, absorbed in the state of divine being, okay? You might want to try that when you get there. Don't force it on, until you're really agile in incarnate existence. Don't play with your life, okay? But on the third day, I lost one second of the sound of the row. You know, that's the sign that I'm snapping off. Immediately my hand went on the XM radio. I pumped the volume up and I was there. No mantra. All right, burn, motherfucker, burn. Okay. <laughs> High wisdom. For fun, guys, explain burn, motherfucker, burn to those who weren't there yesterday, okay? How much I love the blissful, enlightening wisdom of that. So, when you do this, you have to pay attention. And the moment that there's something going on, and actually I started transcending at the, f the fifth mantra I told you not to do while driving. <laughs> because it's, it's so intense. It is meant to bring you in another state. It's not about incarnation. Okay. I started to chit chat. Did you see? I started to speak of other things in that. I started to bring you to something else. Your ego told me, hey, hey oh, oh, okay, give me a bit of time to just. Well, I mean, I just observed not being affected or being affected, and now you're affecting me with some other stuff. 
calling in the soul to produce this this stirring. Whoa! <laughs> Give me time to integrate. <laughs> All right. Good. You understand this? Okay. If you want your soul to take over the experience of your existence, this will help. Okay. It has a hundred different definitions depending on the context. In this context, it means perfect or perfected. Aroga is health. And Nam is a Bija mantra. the objective thing of what I am, not the subjective experience of God. <coughs> Roga means ailment or sickness. A roga is non-sickness, absence, okay? Perfect absence of sickness, okay? So it's perfect health, okay? Om Nama Siddhya Roga Nam. And the, the I at the end of a mantra because of the A that follows, becomes a Y. Okay? It's Siddhi, but Siddhya Rogana. Okay? You will focus just a tad on your solar plexus. I'm not giving wisdom about this. This you'll only get through experience. It is, I acknowledge the perfect health of what I am, okay? Whatever concerns me, Nam, whatever is where I am implicated, okay? At the objective, tangible level, I'll show you something, okay? While you breathe out, you push gently and you release, okay? So you're not pulling in like the yoga thing. It needs to be your hand. Okay, on the navel and pull, push up just a bit, not to give you stomach burns, okay? Breathe out, release. Breathe out, release while you breathe in, okay? You got that? Now you will pull in a bit with your abdomen, okay? Just with your abdominal muscles. So part of it pushing, Part of it, your abdomen, okay? Not pulling strong. It has to be light, okay? Breathe out. Stay out. Release. Normal breath. Breathe out. Release. Normal breath. You feel the energy here? We just did the Om Namah Paramahagam, and you got some energy, okay? And we do this to unclog the intestine, okay? Which will be very good for you, to unclog the intestine. <coughs> if it becomes hard, if you push with too much effort, that's not it. You just need to apply a bit. Hands united, just the comfortable way for you, okay? Normal, but did you see that there's some kind of stress or energy that just was released? Hmm? 
at one point you'll feel that it stimulates an energy here that makes your forehead sweat. Okay, it releases the energy clogs okay, in there. So that's a part of the technique of the previous mantra, Om Namah Paramatma Gam, that I forgot to tell you. Do observation, exhaustive observation, and sometimes, two, three times a day, before your practice or after, just sometimes just normal breath. Pull. Normal breath. And you do this a few times, okay? If you want to do an hour, be sure not to have a hernia afterwards, okay? Don't don't push too much effort, okay? Don't don't destroy your intestinal function out of overexerting yourself. But you do it a few times. And then you do a minute, and then you do five minutes, okay? That's yoga. That is to just keep the energy flowing inside at the very physical, vital level, okay? Because this is required for the next step to happen. This is why I thought about it. I remember. Acknowledging the perfect state of health. What we didn't say of the body. It's not deha sidyarog, it's just sidyarog. And it's emotional, mental, vital, and physical body all at once. Everything that concerns me goes into a healthy state. As healthy as my consciousness can conceive as what is health. Okay? It's not a precise healing mantra. It's not something that you do in Reiki. It's not something that you use to regenerate an organ. I gave other teachings to do that. It's something that will just naturally program your nature to stay healthy on the long run. Okay, all the mantras we do are something you do on the long run. So now we'll do it a bit. Okay. Om Namah Sidyaroga Nam. Om Namah Sidyaroga Nam. You can do Om Namah, you can just do, do Sidi Sidyaroga Nam. <coughs> Sidyaroga Nam. But this will bring you eventually to transcend a bit. Not, not as much as in the other mantras, but Om Namah is good to acknowledge, okay? To get your mind in accepting, oh yeah, it's there, okay? Om Namah Siddhyaroga Nam. Incarnate, mindful, not transcending. Go in your body, physical flesh, Om Namah Siddhyaroga Nam. Go in the vital body, Om Namah Siddhyaroga Nam. Go into the emotional body and then the mental. Play with that. Do all at once. Do one at a time. Play with that. The four lower bodies you want to keep healthy. This will add years to your life. These first four mantras are what will stimulate the health. <coughs> And while you live, you live in a functional way. Because this combined to observation. Om Namah Siddhyaroga Nam. Good. It will have a gentle effect on you. back here. <clears throat> These first four mantras really provoke something, okay? The first mantra, Om Namah Sukhyananda, will bring joy. And you can think of your base chakra if you want, but it's not limited to there. It's everywhere, but you can think, amongst other things, to the experience of the base chakra. <coughs> Om 
that will bring joy. So I want you to do a few breaths. Om Namah Sukhyanandaram. Om Namah Sukhyanandaram. Breathe. And ink on it. You're summoning joy. Everywhere, but also in your body. Yes. Second mantra. Om Namah Paramaswastya Ham. The experience of detachment is there. Om Namah Paramaswastya Ham. Summon love. <coughs> Om Namah Paramaswastya Ham. Stimulate love. Stimulate self-containment of love. Autonomy of love. Energy of love. Om Namah Love in the heart, the mind, the body, everything. All right. You got the joy, you got the love, you got both energies moving. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. Stir it, move it. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. Don't control the flow. Don't control what is the movement. Just declare that you are affected and stirred. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. So you got joy, you got love, and now it moves you. Your soul moves you. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. And you will feel the speed of the energy in your body augment. The speed of your experience augment. It prepares you for something called the quickening, which is an experience the immortals live. You know, Highlander, the movie? Yeah, the quickening, that's really what it's called. They took, the, they took this from the Tao's wisdom. The acceleration of the particles of life in your body. Om Namah Paramatma Gan. Okay, now this energy moves. I am perfectly healthy. Om Namah Siddharodhanam. Perfected health. That is what I am. Om Namah Siddhyarogana. In your body. Solar plexus, entire body, and everything else. Om Namah Siddhyarogana. Alright. Om Namah Sugyananda. Om Namah Premaswasya. Om Namah Paramatma Gam. Om Namah Siddhyarogana. So you got your negative polarity your positive polarity plugged on your battery <coughs> and you put it to work. Does that make sense? Okay? Now you're regenerating your body at every level. <laughs> okay? Do you feel, go like this, mm, stir, stimulate the, the saliva glands. Okay? You feel that there's some kind of saliva, eventually you might have it, the drop of saliva that it just starts to come in. That's when even your saliva gets the energy of immortality and dumps it in your mouth so you can drink it. This is Amrita, the elixir of long life. Okay? It's the effect <coughs> of the gaze of Shiva on your nature that makes you immortal, okay? It's the effect of affecting your natural existence with the powers of divinity, which are joy, love, and self, that moves you, and you put this into health. The fourth mantra is, I'm healthy. You'll notice it's the fourth mantra of health. Okay. Just so happens the first mantra got you to be happy in your body. Okay. Stop being afraid of all things, just be happy. And then, there's a self-containment and understanding of the movement of things, the karma, the effects of life. The karma is about being affected by other, which is swastya, just being autonomous. And then there's something inside you in the abdomen, and boom, okay? And then you'll be perfectly happy, okay? Just have this random occurrence. <laughs> All right? Breathe. Oh, those who do know Kujian understand the, the steps, okay.
you do QGN, you'll notice, oh, there's something like QGN. Yeah, well, there's a similarity as much as with the nine, uh, the nine first boomies as with the nine first cities, the nine steps of the evolution. There's something. We're using every level of the true experience of evolution in the way it will affect your existence to snap you out of time. Right? So the more you learn about city and Kujian and the Bijas of evolution and all the stuff, the more you'll understand all the mechanics of the universe. Because there's one universe, it's wor it works in one way. <laughs> okay? One car, that many wheels, one steering, and regardless of the amount of wheels, it's still the same type, okay? They're round because the square wheels were not efficient, okay? There's one way that nature works, we need to, to, to accept it. Instead of fight how we want nature to be. So you observe, you need to control, and accept that you don't have control. Did you try to have control in your life? You try to have control? Are you afraid not to have control? Does this happen? Afraid of not having control is the misperception to think that you once had it. Did you ever have control? Ever? No. You just managed. Okay? Did you, the fear of not having control is denial that you don't have it. It's already done. Okay? It's just afraid to look at the simple truth. You don't have control. You never had it. Because it happened. Stuff happened. <laughs> All right? 